This video is a new and improved rewritten, re-recorded and re-edited 2.0 of a previous One Piece 101. The old video is still up if you'd like to watch it, but it was in serious need of an update, so enjoy. This nation is the future of the world in miniature. A world where unwanted things are discarded can never truly be happy. Yet even in this place, children will continue to be born. Someday, I promise that they will all watch as I change the world. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we are going to be delving into one of the most prominent figures in the series, the world's most wanted criminal and leader of the revolutionary army, Monkey D. Dragon. Monkey D. Dragon is a man who is figuratively and literally shrouded, the former in mystery and the latter in a green cloak, who first appeared in the series incredibly early on in the grand scheme of things during the Logtown arc in the East Blue Saga. He appears as an exceptionally stern individual, which is very notable because it's quite unlike the general characteristics displayed by most who carry the middle initial D in the series. Although with that said, Dragon is not without his entirely goofy side as well. It just appears far less frequently than his terrifying brand of stoicosity. But Dragon's primary defining characteristic would most certainly be his strong sense of empathy for those oppressed in this world, as well as for his undeniable rage towards the ruling system that created it. And the combination of these two factors is what inspired him to craft one of the largest and most powerful organizations ever featured in the series, The Revolutionary Army. Now I've already done a whole video on The Revolutionary Army itself, which you should absolutely check out, so I won't go too deeply into their details, but their general mission is to gather a force powerful enough to overthrow the world government, and in particular, the world nobles. And Dragon serves as the figurehead of this organization, having founded it somewhere between 19 and 24 years ago. As for exactly how he went about doing this, well, that's unknown at the time of this recording, and quite in keeping with Dragon's character, really, as he does not like to speak about his past in any way, shape, or form, even to his closest of comrades. Although one prominent member of the Revolutionary Army, being Emporio Ivankov, did at one stage observe that Dragon has a habit of looking towards East Blue when the wind changes, and so went on to speculate that it may be because he has a family there. And Ivankov was pretty bang on the money with this thought. But first I should note that whilst Dragon does not like speaking of his past, we do know a fair bit in regards to his family, as they are exceptionally pronounced characters within the series. First and foremost, Dragon is the son of Monkey D. Garp, who is known as the hero of the Marines, which immediately puts Dragon at odds with his father, as he is a strong representative of the very powerful power that he seeks to undo. But then we have an even more intriguing connection, as Dragon himself happens to be the father of series protagonist Monkey D. Luffy. And in stark contrast to his relationship with Garp, Dragon is quite proud of his son's career in the world of piracy, and seems to hold very high expectations for Luffy, as do we all, I suppose. And of course, Luffy spent his childhood years on Dawn Island in East Blue, making Dragon's gaze in that general direction all the more understandable. In fact, Dragon is so supportive of his son that he even made a personal appearance in Logtown and intervened when Marine Captain Smoker was about to arrest Luffy, allowing his son to escape and sail into the Grand Line with the beginnings of the Straw Hat Pirates. However, apart from this one almost sort of meeting thing, Dragon has never encountered Luffy again over the course of the series at the time of this recording. Although he does keep up with his son's exploits via newspaper articles and bounty posters, primarily practicing the belief that Luffy is old and capable enough to be taking care of himself. As such, Dragon dedicates himself entirely to the cause of the Revolutionary Army, and over the last two decades or so, he has amassed a force mighty enough for the world government to stand up and take notice. And as a result of this power, Dragon has been dubbed the most wanted criminal in the world. Now, obviously a lot of that label has to do with his essential role in orchestrating the Revolutionary Army, as well as possessing a dangerous amount of charisma, much like his son, actually, having been shown to be capable of making allies and convincing people to join the army and its cause with great ease, as if it was some sort of natural gift. But as for his individual abilities, at this stage, Dragon is a complete unknown quantity when it comes to strength. He has never been shown in combat, although the fact that Smoker made no attempt to arrest him back in Logtown may speak volumes of Dragon's true capability capabilities. The one thing I will mention is that it is heavily hinted that Dragon possesses some sort of ability to do with wind and or storms. For example, his appearance in Logtown was accompanied by a fierce storm, which contained a strangely concentrated burst of wind. And this wind would appear again in a flashback of Dragon saving the residents of the Goa Kingdom, alongside an incredibly convenient wind tunnel that provided them with a path through the flames. And on top of everything else, there is also the fact that in his free time, Dragon just enjoys staring into the wind. Very suspicious indeed. But regardless of that, the time that Dragon and the army had been preparing for would come soon enough. As after the Paramount War, Dragon felt that it would soon be time to gather the Revolutionary Army leaders from all across the globe as the power balance of the world was beginning to shift. Although Dragon would not issue this formal gathering until two years later following the events of the Dressrosa arc, after which he officially issued Koala with the order to summon the leaders. However, before this gathering could occur, the army's headquarters on the island of Baltigo were attacked and subsequently decimated by the forces of the Emperor Blackbeard, forcing the army to take refuge on Momoiro 
island. And here is where I need to put up the good old spoiler warning for the events of the Reverie and Wano arcs. If you are not up to date with both of these arcs, it's probably for the best that you go ahead and mute this video until this funky spoiler warning goes away. I promise I won't be too long, but for the rest of you, here we go. On Momo Iro Island, it would become apparent that Dragon's plan was to declare war on the World Nobles during the upcoming Reverie. A very curious time to strike as the concentrated forces of the Marines would be gathered in and around the Holy Land of Marajoie in order to offer protection for the event. And while very few details of this plan were known, we did see several key members of the army infiltrate Marajoie during the event. However, quite notably, we did not see Dragon himself. However, what we do know is that on the fourth day of the event, a faction of the Revolutionary Army fought directly against Admirals Fujitora and Ryokugyu in order to rescue their former comrade, Bartholomew Kuma. Sadly, the outcome of this conflict, as well as the status of the army and Dragon himself are currently unknown. Some more fun facts about Dragon. Interestingly enough, Luffy is not the only Straw Hat member that Dragon has a direct association with, as their archaeologist Nico Robin would come to spend two years with the Revolutionary Army, who just so happened to be an individual that Dragon had been searching out since the destruction of Ohara. It is implied that Dragon became quite well acquainted with Robin, and even went so far as to ask about her well-being, which is much more concern than he has ever shown for his own son. However, this may be because he believes that Robin's abilities to read the ancient language are the key to changing the world. Although he has very little connection to piracy, Dragon was one of the many future influential figures who was present at the execution of the former pirate king, Gold D. Roger. Although it should be noted that at this time, Dragon had not yet formed the Revolutionary Army. Weirdly enough, Portgas D. Ace was shown to be aware of the fact that Dragon was the father of his spawn brother Luffy, something that not even Luffy knew until Garp told him during the return to Water 7 arc, which implies that Garp must have told Ace of Luffy's heritage at some point. And finally, a truly useless fact, Despite the idea that Dragon is an incredibly important presence in the world of One Piece, he has been consistently not so popular, at least with the Japanese fans, having ranked 79th, 81st, and 85th in the 4th, 5th, and 6th character polls respectively. And to put that into some perspective, the character who immediately follows Dragon in the 86th spot for the 6th poll is Spandam. So congratulations, Dragon, you narrowly beat Spandam. Yay. But that pretty much does it for Monkey D. Dragon. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101. One. Hey everybody, Dragon needs a hug. No, he doesn't. That was a lie, yes he does. No, he doesn't. Except for right now. Huh, I've just noticed something weird. In these two screen caps, I don't think the rain in the foreground moves at all. Oh my god, it really doesn't. Dragon looks like he's having one hell of a time though. Woohoo! Uh.